deal of the season in Kenneth Lofton Jr. Probably, maybe. Let's talk about it. It's the Hoops Nerd Show. All right, guys, before we get into this, make sure you go to pricepicks.com, use promo code HOOPSNERD. Go pick the over on Kenny Lofton picks in the Jazz's next game, and you will do well. Kenny Lofton is absolutely dominating for the Jazz. Next game, they play the Golden State Warriors. Bet the over on the Warriors points. Bet the over on Kenneth Lofton Jr. on whatever you want to pick, and it will go well. Because it's going to be the Warriors trying to beat the Jazz. It's going to be Kenny Lofton Jr. showing the absolute skill of a champion. And you can only do that if you go to pricepicks.com. And by the way, you go to pricepicks.com, use promo code HOOPSNERD. They will match up to $100. Go do it. If you haven't already, go sign up. It's fun, easy money, and it helps the channel. I would appreciate it. All right. Well, how about that? All of a sudden, the Utah Jazz are on a two-game winning streak. After losing 13 in a row, the Utah Jazz have now won two in a row to end the season. Not a bad way to end the year. And by the way, tonight was the back end of a back-to-back after traveling on the road. Really impressive win for this Jazz team and really impressive to see the the Jazz's new superstar, Kenneth Lofton Jr., (laughs) on this Jazz team and absolutely crushing the opposition. But let's go through this. And we'll see. This might not be quite as long as tonight. We'll see. Maybe. It was a fun one, but really there was one main storyline tonight. Uh the Clippers have their playoff seed locked in. The Jazz actually don't after tonight don't have their playoff seed completely locked in. I believe Utah now uh with this they have no chance to catch Memphis, but the Jazz could If they're not careful, catch Brooklyn. Because now they are only one game up on Brooklyn ever after having won two in a row. Uh, So it's actually kind of important for Utah to lose their next game. As fun as this was, the Jazz need to probably think about, I guess you can't play Kenneth Kenneth Lofton Jr., current Utah Jazz superstar, uh, next game. We'll see. But if he doesn't play that next game, that would be so pretty funny, to be honest. Alexander Tufts, you were on playback tonight. That's amazing. Thanks for joining. By the way, guys, if you haven't joined the playback for SLC Dunk, you can. That's where I'm there watching live. You can watch with me. And it is fun. Uh, Christian House Money to Haas, member for 31 months. My man. Yo, good game. I only saw highlights. at what I was at a Diamondbacks game. Well, guess what? Pretty soon. Uh, well, may, I don't know if baseball, but we're going to have a hockey team in here in Utah. That's pretty crazy. I'll have to get some hats. I am a fan of wearing hats, and I would love to get some hockey hats. I was going to say, like, I don't know a lot about hockey. Hockey. (laughs) Hockey. Hockey. If the Coyotes come to Utah and they become like the Golden Eagles or the Yetis or whatever they become, who does the knuckle puck? Right? You remember from Mighty Ducks, the knuckle puck? I can't. I'm. That's an important part of hockey, at least for me, because my entire... My entire knowledge of hockey comes from Mighty Ducks. So I'm not sure who does the knuckle puck, but someone will at some point. All right, let's talk about the Jazz. Let's just go through the players. It's funny. They have Kenny Lofton Jr. at the bottom, 35 minutes. He led the team in minutes. He led the team in stardom. He led the team in points and everything. He was dominant tonight. Uh, Absolutely awesome. Best player on the floor. No questions asked. It was so great. Uh, Samanich had some moments tonight. He's so mechanical, but overall he was actually pretty decent. It's funny. The Jazz as a team shot 17% from three and won this game. (laughs) No one shot the three well, and the Jazz won the game. How well did the Clippers actually shot it better? 25%. So the Jazz won in different ways. Uh, they didn't have Kenneth Lofton Jr. That's one thing's for sure. But anyway, Samanich was pretty solid, although he's so mechanical. It'll be interesting if he's on the team next year. I don't know. It really just depends on what the Jazz want to do as a team. But man, it'll be... This offseason, by the way, guys, is going to be absolutely fascinating what the Utah Jazz do. I have no idea. I know what I hope they do. I know the signs are pointing to a certain thing. But in the end, you don't know exactly what they're going to do. Uh, Taylor Hendricks continues to to do impressive things. 
There are little baby steps here and there. Uh, but Taylor Hendricks, three for five from the field, one for three from three. But one of those shots was this where he drove into the free throw line and pulls up and just knocks down the jumper. I mean, if he starts doing stuff like that, things get pretty exciting. He also moves the ball. Look at that. One assist for him, but he had four assists last game. Had more minutes tonight, 22 instead of 18. There's just a lot to really like about what Taylor Hendricks brings. And I hope he gets a lot of minutes next year so he can make the Rising Stars game and everything because I think he deserves it. He's a really nice prospect, and he's showing that he can really do a lot. So fun to see Taylor Hendricks improving. Omer Yurtsevin only played 12 minutes tonight, and that was probably – that's funny, 12 minutes, 10 rebounds. He was rebounding the ball like crazy. But for whatever reason, he was – and part of the reason was Kenneth Lofton Jr. because he was playing center a lot of the minutes tonight. So – Anyways, Omer sat on the bench, and that's fine because, you know what, he's a solid big, but he's not someone that you're like, oh, man, we need Yurtsevin on the floor. He's just a solid rotationary big, and that's fine, you know. Good for Omer. He's making a lot more than me, I can tell you that. <laughs> Johnny Juzang played 22 minutes tonight. I continue to just love what we see from him. Look at that, plus 10 for Johnny Juzang. Uh, led the team, actually. Jo Juzang is just a flat-out shooter. He goes two for three again tonight from three, so he's over 40% for the season. I think he's absolutely – I mean, he's going to be a guy that doesn't get a lot of – um, you know, it's going to be the Kenny Lofton Jr. show, which is, you know, warranted. But Juzang is knocking down threes and playing solid for this Jazz team. He just does nice things. Look at that. Two assists and two steals and two for three from three. I mean, that's a player you are happy to have on the floor. So – Nice to see. Okay, so Keontae George had some real flashes tonight. Honestly, some real flashes. And then we saw some of the rookie struggles. And that's going to be kind of the story of the show, you know. And we're going to see a lot of that next year, too. The thing is, is what you saw from Key tonight was the potential. Because when he is, when he is comfortable and moving, he is awesome. I know he only shot 41%, or no, that's... THD. He only shot 33% from the field tonight. He did knock down two of his threes. He had two assists and five turnovers. The, the turnover bug is big. Part of it is because he is the focal point of the defense. But man, he was starting to break it down tonight. And personally, I'm not worried at all. If anything, I'm actually really excited. When this three-point shot is falling for him, things open up like crazy. And we see the passing. Tonight, the passing was fantastic. If you just look at the box score tonight, if you didn't get a chance to see the game, you'll see just two assists and you'll wonder, oh my goodness, what's going on? Well, the passing was electric tonight from, from Key. At certain moments in the second and third quarter, it was like, holy smokes. It was the stuff we saw in Summer League. Yes, the shooting percentages have to get better. Yes, the turnovers have to go down. Those will go up with time. The one thing that he does need to improve on that he could improve on now is he had a few times where he should have got foul calls and didn't do it and just really complained to the ref and sh needs to get back on defense. That's one thing that he does need to work on. But you know what? He's a rookie, and those are things you can improve on. So anyways, loving what I'm seeing from Key, I just, I'm excited for when these percentages start going up because honestly, it's going to be a game changer for the Jazz. Absolutely. Uh, Sensaba had some nice moments too. All these rookies are showing... Some really nice things. The three ball wasn't falling for him. He missed all four of his threes. Key missed all five of his. And Kenny Lofton Jr. missed all five of his threes. The Jazz couldn't hit their threes tonight, and they found a way to win this game. But Sensaba, you can just see him getting better. He had three rebounds, one assist, one steal. The, ha the handle needs to get better, but you know what? He's showing playmaking. He's showing a lot of different things, which is what, which is what you want to see. So... He's getting better. Uh, Taylor Horton Tucker, you know what? I think next year I probably am not going to have very many moments where I go, oh, no, Key was 2 for 7 from 3. Taylor Horton Tucker was 0 for 5. There are going to be a lot of moments next year where I'm like, you know what? I don't miss. No. <laughs> there are not. Here, let me say this correctly. There are not going to be very many moments next year where I go, boy, I wish Taylor Horton Tucker was on the floor. <laughs> Not many, not many, right? I Once Taylor Horton Tucker got on the floor, the Jazz started losing more games. I think that's 
not a coincidence. The Jazz really would like to lose some of these games so that they can get a better pick, and that's what they did, and they succeeded. Now, maybe the Jazz will re-sign THT next year, and that's how they get Cooper flagged. Who knows? Maybe that's the plan. I'm not sure. But a lot of Jazz losing this season has come coincided with THT being on the floor. Uh, and I know that I want Cooper flag next year, so maybe I should be rooting for the Jazz to sign him and play him 30 minutes a night. I don't know. But you know what? For every good moment, like he had solid moments tonight, and he was a plus one in this game, and a lot of that was defensive. Uh, that was like his defensive additions. There are also so many moments where you're like, what are you doing? Why are you driving into four guys and just shooting it? Why are you pulling up and just fading away and taking this shot? Why are you just going in isolation and making your layup much harder than it needs to be? There's just a lot of moments like that, and they drive me crazy. And so I'm not going to miss that. But you know what? If it means a Cooper flag pick next year, then I'm down for that. Uh, Darius Baisley. What a player. I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. These last two games have been good for my soul. They've been good for my heart because the 13 game losing streak, even though I do enjoy watching it regardless, it's just fun to win and it's fun to root for the team to win. And so absolutely um that was you know what? He is a winning player. <laughs> He's not going to get a ton of accolades tonight, but look at this. 12 points. He was 5 for 7 from the field, 5 rebounds an assist, two steals, a block. He just did a little of everything. He goes out there and he just makes plays. I don't know if he has the impact to be a starter on a championship team, but he is certainly worth keeping on the team as third string and can come in and play some minutes when you need him to. Sorry. I love the idea of bringing him off the bench next year and just seeing if he can consistently improve, be a knockdown three-point shooter. That would be fun to watch. THT, tank his team. Uh, what, did, what did I say during playback? I was like, THT, today has tanking. Or tanking hard today. There we go. That was what I was going with. Tanking hard today, THT. All right, should we talk about the Jazz myth, the man, the legend, Kenneth Lofton Jr.? Absolutely fantastic. In fact, I'm going to bring up this image. Um, let's see here. I'm bringing this up. He was incredible tonight. In fact, okay, guys, I want to do something here. I want to show a highlight tonight for all of you from the game. I wanted to bring this up. It was an incredible highlight from the game. Look. There you go. You can see that during the game, t um, Kenneth Lofton Jr. really brought that heavenly touch to the ball. I mean, he was just, it was just angelic watching him play tonight. And literally the angels were on the court watching him play, singing his praises as he led this jazz team to a victory. Tonight, Kenneth Lofton Jr. had, let's, let's just look at it. 10 for 16 from the field. He shot 62%. That means, considering he was 0 for 5 from 3, he was 10 for 11 from 2. And those were a lot of jump shots. Like, it's crazy his ability to shoot the ball from the mid-range. He is like free throw line extended, and he has that ball, and he is a good passer. And so he can just knock down that shot, or he can pass it inside. Like, one of those big-time plays near the end of the game – Baisley cut and Kenneth Lofton Jr. hit him with the perfect pass and the dunk inside. It was amazing. And his, I know it's just free throw line extended, but it's enough to spread the floor so that other guys can drive to the basket. I think the Jazz have something here. He is leaner than he was with the Grizzlies. And I think he was with the Sixers too. And looks really good. He looks strong. And his ability to just bruise and bury his defender and just get inside. I mean, he made, <laughs> he had that one offensive foul where he sent Tice just flying. I mean, it's really fun. And he's six foot seven. He looks like he is absolutely no fun at all to guard. We talk about, you know, we joke about the weight, but he looks really strong and like really tough to guard. 
And then you consider his touch. That skill level is high. There's a reason he won G League Rookie of the Year, and he's winning. He was on the Rising Stars games. The guy has, he has something, and the Jazz have something here. You know, is this the next Chris Dunn, where the Jazz found him from the G League, decide to give him a chance and sign him? I mean, they gave him a three-year contract already. I think the year two and year three are unguaranteed. But man, what a fun find, and he's just fun to watch. You know, look at this near triple double. It would have been amazing for him to just get that triple double. And you know how much jazz fans want that triple double <laughs> for Kenneth Lofton Jr. to just randomly get it at the end of the season would have been hilarious. He was really close to uh, 27 points, nine rebounds, eight assists. What a fun player. Let's play him a lot next year, right? I like watching him play. It's really fun. And you can tell that other players, at least Keontae George looks like he loves playing with him. It's a blast. So anyways, that was fun to watch. I tell you what, if you weren't able to watch these two games, go watch them. It was fun. There was a lot, um, there was a lot to like, yes, there were a few moments that they, uh, that they, I was like, what, who is, I got a text. Uh, there were a lot of moments where they're like wondering, if they could win this game. But honestly, Kenneth Lofton Jr. was the reason tonight. He was fantastic. Awesome stuff from Kenny. Uh, I, I call it Kenny, Kenny Lofton Jr. is what I'm going to call him. Um, a lot of people online are calling him Snack Randolph. <laughs> but it was fantastic. KG10 to TH5, $2. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it so much. You guys, I can't believe the season's coming to a close. Can you believe it? Lofton had a portly angel on his shoulder tonight. That he did. Snack Randolph was in full effect. Full effect. Snack Randolph, baby. And it is a little Zach Randolphy with his ability to score inside, just be a bruiser. I think he could be a fantastic sixth man. Like a fantastic sixth man. Where you can run the offense through him because he passes the ball from that free throw line area extended. He can drive, he can score, he can take on mismatches. What a find. I think he's the future sixth man, and I think the Jazz have to look at that because he could be really, really fun. Snack Zach, snack attack, baby. All right, guys, it might be a little uh, a shorter one tonight. It is late, but shout out to everyone who watched the game and everyone who is here right now. That one was a lot of fun. Two-game winning streak, baby. It's too bad they didn't start Kenny Lofton Jr. to start the season. We'd be going to the playoffs. That's right. But let's see here. Uh, I got to start the... We got to start the music because we got to do our... By the way, while I pull this up, um, the Jazz really need to think about losing their next game. <laughs> as fun as this was, we got to start... We got to not mess around and make sure they lose the next one. So it's going to be a lot of THT, a lot of Luka Samanich next game. And by the way, I don't think the Jazz win it because the Golden State Warriors are trying to make improve their playoff seating. So, I mean, if the Jazz win their next game, then that's legitimately impressive. Uh, I think so, KG10. I think he's a future 6th, 7th man. I think he'd be awesome. And who knows? Maybe he becomes something better. I don't know. All right. If the Utah Jazz, if the lottery was today, what would happen? All right, Utah stays at eight. Portland jumps two spots. Detroit stays at one. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. That obviously, oh, look, they've changed it around. Updated one day ago. Stefan Castle stays at six. Dang it. Modest Bucellis to the Jazz. Not much change here. All right, let's give a shout-out to the All-Stars tonight. Let's give a shout-out to Ryan Perry, the legend, Nathan Butnett Burkhardt, Fly Eagles Fly, Platinum Eagles, the Owl, or let's see, the real deal, Lars Jarvin, and Just Buckets, JB, Baby Elliot Madsen. We should change that. You know what? Let's go, yeah, baby, Elliot Madsen. Like, yeah, baby. Yeah, baby, Elliot Madsen, Christian House Money to Haas, the outlaw, Jesse James Nelson, Ezekiel Ricebe, the man from down under, see ya, Lexilator, built for tough Alexander Tufts, Jorge Arrizaga Mimigo de Bajo, Jordan to go best role. TGD Total Game Domination, Tyson Price, The Price is Right, Austin R. Grant, Editor Extraordinaire, KG10 to TH5, Patrick Kubo, The Connoisseur, and Robert Hall of Fame. Guys, if you haven't already, like and subscribe to the channel. 
I will talk to you next time.